All right, so our goal today is going to be to fit as many item, the one you see here on the screen, um, fit as many as these on a single texture to make sure our game is actually very small in texture size. We can have multiple models, that's fine, but in terms of texture, all we have for this game is a couple of UI, of course, but then on top of that, for all the 3D model, we have something that is, I believe, uh, 64 by 64 pixels, which gives you this. And everything that you see, including the penguin, the house, everything, is on the same texture. So I'll be showing you how to achieve that. It's very, very simple. And um, we will need three different things, of course. We will need Unity. We will need a photo editing software. I'm using Photoshop. And then also a 3D modeling software. Here I have Blender, um, which is the new Blender. So I'm having quite a lot of fun with it. Um, that being said, we also need to plan out what we're going to be doing for a scene. So do you plan on doing a environment? Do you plan on doing um, uh, characters? All of that you need to plan out first because what you'll need to do is you'll need to cramp up colors within a texture and know what those colors are going to be, basically. So maybe you want to put your whole uh, color palette on there if you're doing a environment, for example. Now, in our case today, I only have one item to show. I only have this tree that I modeled real quick. It's going to be a low poly tree, of course, and it has two items on it. The base, which is going to be some sort of brown, and the leaves, which are going to be a certain green, right? <laughs> so, that being said, uh, we're going to head into our photo editing software, and what we're going to do right here is decide on how big we're going to be making our texture. So depending on how many colors you'll need for your whole environment, this is where you'll decide what is the size. Now, in my case today, I'm only going to be doing one item, but do note that you will have plenty of space to add more color if we want to do more items. And I'll give you, I'll refer you back to the example that I have right here. As you can see, it has multiple items on it, has this sort of blue, this blue. Um, the colors that we need for the penguin are also on top of the same texture. They're all right here. So depending on what you'll need, um, adjust the size accordingly. And do note that yes, we're trying to optimize as much as we can, but 64 by 64 is actually, it, it's nothing. 128 by 128 is nothing. Where it starts to matter is when you jump from 1K to 2K. Um, and also do note that every time that you do these, uh, you, you want to create texture for your game or any other application that runs on a computer, um, you'll want to do something that is dividable by eight. So try to always land on a number that is dividable by eight because then you get to have a, um, it's gonna be sort of a little bit better in memory because bytes are eight bits. And then on top of that, if you're doing video games, which we are right now, you wanna make it dividable by eight because it's gonna be easier for you to scale the texture down without losing any details. So we'll do one example in which we're gonna do very, very simple colors. For example, right here, I'm going to be zooming in and I'm going to be finding a color that is for my leaves. So this green, and I'm just going to be putting it here at the top left. Um, I'll take another color that is this brown and I'm just going to put it, oh, maybe not that brown, that brown is ugly. And maybe this brown here. So here now I have two color in the texture that I can have up to 256 colors. So technically I could put a lot more than that, but I'll leave some space and I'll show you why in a moment. But all I need technically is this, and we'll make this work before we move on to a more advanced um, advanced step. So we'll be saving this right here as a Atlas file. So Atlas, um, it's a PNG file, and I'll just put it under my game folder. And now my next step will have to do with the 3D model. So with the 3D model, you're gonna need to find um, how to apply your material. So here I can apply material in Blender by going over to the material property, changing the texture to what I currently have in mind. So open the one I've created, so Atlas PNG, and here you will find that really nothing happens. I need to shade this and, and see what happens. Um, this is what I see, right? It's not really good. I don't really know what's going on. So what I'll do is I'll put a filler color in the back just for the moment, so I could use a bright pink. Unity likes to do that, so use a bright pink on a material error. And I'll do the same thing here. So now going back in here, if I re-update my texture, I see it's mostly pink. And the reason it's mostly pink is because of the UV unwrapping. And this is where the magic comes in. So all our problem could be solved with UV unwrapping. And that's what we'll get into in a second. Um, 
let's go under the UV editing, UV unwrapping, UV editing, it depends which software you use. In my case, I'm using Blender, so it's called editing. And I'm going to be grabbing all my faces. And you see here, I have all of them selected. And on the left hand side, you can kind of figure out what we're going to be doing. We're going to be grabbing all of these spaces and collapsing them all in one. Now with all my vertices selected, I'm going to make sure to align them on the X axis and also align them on the Y axis. And you kind of understand that all our UVs are actually collapsed on the, the single little point here. And we can move it over to the color we wish. So here, those are the leaves. So I'm going to be moving all my UVs right on top of this. And now with that in mind, since they're all sitting here, I'm going to go back into shading mode and you'll see that it's all green. So it's really as simple as that. And I'm going to quickly do the base as well, since I'm right here. And now for the base, I'm going to head over to the base, go under the material, choose the one I've created. So the Atlas. And with that in mind, I can now go back to the UV editing. Um, grab all my faces for this one. So let me just enter the, the object mode grabbing all my faces. Here they are, collapse them. So align X. Oh, sorry, I have to select them first. Align, align, and then move that over to this place. And here we go. So that's all we needed to do. Now, we're going to do something else, we're going to export that first and put it in our game. So I'm going to go under export, I will export as a FBX. And now here we go, we have the tree, and we also have the atlas within the project. Now it's time to drag and drop it. And you'll find out that in the scene, it looks much different. It doesn't have the right color. As you can see, it's a little bit pink, which means that probably the color on top of it, um, on top of our UV were blended in such a way that it, it kind of touched the, uh, the pink and that's not what we want. So um, that has to be fixed within the import settings. So here on the import settings, we're going to be changing a little bit of things here, not not on the, on the model itself, but on the texture. So the way Unity grab this texture, it's very small and it for some reason it believes that, um, well, it applies some sort of algorithm where the color will blend within each other and we don't want that. So under the filter mode, I'm going to start by putting that on point, no filter. And I'm also going to change the max size to something a little bit more evident. So maybe 256. Um, I'm going to keep, what should I be doing? Oh, I want to be under high quality and the format in my case, maybe will be RGB 24 bit. Um, we're not using any alpha, but if we were, we could put it under a different, a different format. As you can see, most of them are going to work. And when we do resize it to this format, then the algorithm, you know, it, it doesn't mess up here and it makes sure to grab the right colors and it doesn't blend them. So here we have our very, very efficient tree. <laughs> Now we could add a lot more object, we could add bush, use the same green. Um, but what I'd like to, to go on today and, and to, to emphasize is that you have a lot of other colors left to use here. And you might not be able to fill all of these colors for a lot of reason, because you don't have as many object or you want to keep a very strict color palette. Now what I'm going to show you is a different technique, however, to get a little bit more detail, which we use in Subway Skater. And that technique will be to use multiple grades of that green and multiple grade of, um, of that color here. So what I'll be doing is I'll leave them there for a second, but I will create a green gradient. And to do so, I'll find my tools in Photoshop, create a gradient, grab this green, Uh, for some reason, it thinks it's pink, so that doesn't really help me out, but I'm just going to pick it manually. So I'll go with this bright green here and I'll take the same green, but a little bit lower like so. So this way I have a gradient. And then I'll make sure to just leave it on a single spot like so. I'll do the exact same thing for the other color. And here we go. So now this way, um, we have colors that are a little bit different from earlier. So instead of just having one single pixel of color, I now have a full gradient. And I'm going to override the atlas I currently have, which of course will give us a weird result. But that also means we have to change, um, change back the UVs here because the UV data is set to be on a single pixel. 
this is no longer the case. This is not what we'd like to see. So instead, I will grab, for example, the base over here. I'll grab all of it. And I'm going to make sure to take these, so all the UVs that we collapse together, and just stretch them down on the vertical axis so I can have the whole gradient here. And the base of the tree could be a little bit darker than the top. To make sure I can see these changes in real time, I'm also going to reselect the atlas, and now we'll see this. And as you can see, as I go up and down, we have a different behavior here. So what I do to stretch them down again is I'll actually just right click and do another UV unwrap. Uh, with, for example, cube projection, which will give me this. I can align that on the X axis, move it down like so. Maybe just scale it down to make sure it doesn't, um, it doesn't wrap up. So maybe take these, move them up just a little bit, take these, move them down, and then I'll put that on top of the green, uh, sorry, the, the brown. And now our behavior will be a little bit different. It's hard to see here. Um, because it, it seems to blend with the pink, so maybe I'll still want to move that a little bit towards this side. We'll see it better in the game, however. But um, with that in mind, I now have a gradient. And if we test it out directly in the game, I'm just going to overwrite what I had earlier. You'll find out here that we have a gradient. And I'm just going to wrap this up with maybe a little bit of smoothing, so mesh smooth faces, export that once again, and we have um, we have something that is very, very efficient, efficient optimal I meant, but okay, it's not really good looking, I'll need to be a little bit better, and of course, as you can see here, I messed up, um, I messed up one, my smoothing, not only that, but I also messed up uh, maybe my UV unwrapping, so a lot of things to fix here on my end, but if you do it well, which you will with a little bit more, more time, you can achieve something um, like this. And you'll find that the gradient, you can have the gradient working in your favor as well. You see it a little bit here, you see it a little bit here on different um, different plank. So it was used on a different plank. All the UVs were extracted separately for the planks and then put on a different shading of that color. And it just looks better. So that is how we achieve this sort of result. This is how we achieve a very minimal texture size for your game. Do note that the models still take a lot of spaces, but in terms of texture in memory, that is very little. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, it's a technique that you should be using for mobile. If you're on PC, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and to be honest, we have so much memory now that it's not an issue, but anywhere that you have issues with memory is where you could use this optimizing technique. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode.